G'day, ladies and gents. Cubic meeting Mr. here. Mr. Meter, some of the server members are rather concerned about your treatment of animals on the server. What are you talking about? They seem perfectly fine. My guy, there are literally protests outside of the building right now. Yo, stop torturing the animals and stuff. Damn, hippies. Time to teach them a lesson. Saxton, hail! Alright, enough of these shenanigans. Wavetech's ultimate shulker farm is finally done and built in survival. And we decided to decorate it as the Manco Crate Factory. And yes, I did model my skin after the Team Fortress character Saxton Hale. He just represents such an obscene exaggeration of an Australian man and I love it. I also play a lot of the custom game mode in Team Fortress, but you can be beaten to death by him in a massive arena. Anyway, that is enough about Team Fortress for now. Let's take a look at the farm. We start with the nether side of the farm. Where we are able to control every single aspect of the farm, as well as run the farm using only a single player in the nether dimension. So from here, I can activate the TNT killing system by flipping this lever. I can activate the chunk loading for the overworld side. We should see five minecarts coming through this portal. Yep. The TNT looting system is running. We can go ahead and flip this lever right here. And almost immediately, we have shulkers flowing in. We of course use the TNT looting system that I already demonstrated in the mother of all shulker farms. The difference being that this farm has been fully optimized and designed for use in survival. Now I'm sure you might have a lot of questions looking at this like, why are there boats on top of these portals? And why do you elevate the TNT up to the killing chambers instead of having the killing chambers down low and dropping the TNT in from above? Well both of these design decisions are actually very related. You see the farm uses this new portal based shulker farm module that I spent months designing and perfecting. And this module is 3D tileable meaning that you can tile it in any direction. To minimize the amount of chunk loading needed, we've stacked as many modules into a vertical space as possible. Which means the modules start at Y0 inside of this bedrock hole and occupy everything all the way up to the 256 build limit in 1.17. Of course, if we had waited until 1.18, we could have made the shulker farm even taller with the new build limit. However, ever since we updated to 1.17, we've been in desperate need of additional shulker shells for shulker boxes. So it was better to have this farm done sooner rather than later. We are operating this farm with extremely tight tolerances in terms of portal linking, which is why we've had no option but to build the killing chamber as high as possible with portals right on top to chunk load the overworld side by sending minecarts. In fact, the farm is so tightly optimized that we've had to resort to sending minecarts directly into the portals inside the farm in order to chunk load it. Because there is simply no room for a chunk loading grid above the farm. Here we have five chunk loading points. Four of them are to chunk load the actual shulker farm modules. Then we have one additional portal which chunk loads this small breeder which supplies shulkers to the shulker farm. When a minecart comes from the nether, it is converted to its item, which is then sent all the way back to this system, which receives all the minecarts, and then redistributes them back to the nether side. The minecarts are then received, forming a closed loop system of minecarts in order to perform the chunk loading. And this allows the farm to chunk load itself indefinitely. As for those boats, well the explanation is quite simple really. The killing chamber is so high up that we're actually at build limit. And what this means is that we can't actually teleport proof these spaces above the portals. So our only option is to place entities there which also prevents shulkers from teleporting. So as our shulkers meet an explosive death using TNT ignited by an arrow which belongs to this skeleton right here who is holding a looting free sword, the items are collected immediately by these hoppers and loaded straight into these boxes. And we then receive the shulker boxes filled with shulker shells in this box system right here. Rufo has also gone ahead and included chest minecart integration for transporting the items en masse using the piston bolt network. 
Now let's talk a little bit about the rates of this farm. For extensive testing, provided the farm is at full capacity, it produces exactly 69,000 shulker shells per hour. Now you might be thinking, how on earth did we get such nice rates for shulker shells? But to be perfectly honest, this was not intentional, and there are a few very complicated reasons why it's very difficult to control the rates of a shulker farm. Through months of designing this farm in creative, I discovered so many arbitrary parameters which can affect the farm. Like apparently spiders don't let minecarts move. Just lots of weird obscure game mechanics that tended to break the farm or cause problems or slow things down. For example, one of the parameters that we have control over is the transition time between shulkers splitting. And of course, the smaller the transition time, the faster the shulker farm. You can decrease the transition time by increasing the number of snow golems in the chamber. The reason why our snow golems influences the transition time of our shulkers is because in order for them to split, they need to have their shells open and there needs to be a shulker bullet in the chamber. There is a slight randomness to the targeting of the snow golems. However, if you have more of them, it's more likely that one of the snow golems will randomly start targeting the shulker sooner. Another behavior that we can observe for very high golem counts is that there are so many snowballs being pelted at the shulker that even when the shulker teleports away, the next shulker gets hit by a snowball immediately and opens its shell, making it much more likely for the shulkers to split if there are multiple bullets in the chamber. And the results I found were quite interesting. For low golem counts, we can clearly see that the rates of the farm increases slightly. However, it reaches a point where it starts decreasing again. So this will be the number of shells that the farm produces per hour. And over here, is the rate at which shulkers get replaced per hour. So what's important to note here is that when we start with only one golem, we start at a relatively high replacement rate. However, this starts to decrease as we increase the number of golems to six. But then suddenly, as we go past six, the replacement rate starts to rise again. Then, at a certain threshold, 24, it suddenly drops again, starts to climb again, and then rises exponentially as we increase the amount of golems. At a first glance, you might have a look at those results and think, hey, it's just randomness happening, right? But the reality with anything is that everything happens for a reason, and results that seem random will have some sort of explanation hidden behind the scenes. When I investigated why lower snow golem counts would increase the shulker replacement rate, I found out that it was simply because, with less snowballs activating this piece of string, triggering the observer, and keeping this hopper cooldown clock engaged, sometimes there will be a random sequence where a string of snowballs coming through would fail to activate this observer for long enough for this cooldown clock to fully disengage and then have the system request a shulker. So a low golem count is more likely to have a misfire and request a shulker when a shulker isn't actually needed. And this resulted in the slightly higher shulker replacement rate with a single snow golem. So why is it for the first few golem counts that we see a decrease in the shulker replacement rate before seeing it turn around and begin to increase for larger golem counts. This is related to another issue which is very difficult to observe with only a single shulker farm module. In fact, I was not able to observe this phenomenon in detail until I was able to run the 126 module shulker farm. Right now I have the game frozen because this problem is so rare that I have to actually pay very close attention to catch it. This right here is what I like to call a trash muppet. This is a shulker which is in a glitch state which allows it to be agitated towards a target and fire shulker bullets without actually opening its shell. Meaning 
This shocker is unable to split no matter how many times it is hit by its own bullet. Now because these shockers do not open their shell, when they do eventually teleport to one of the portal spaces, they do not actually go through the portal because their hitbox isn't actually intersecting the portal blocks. Now a little while ago, I made a bug report about this issue of shulkers, and funnily enough, a member of the technical community named Yun responded with a very plausible explanation for why these shulkers become glitched. The Trash Muppet state seems to be related to the way in which shulkers acquire their targets based on who is annoying them. One way in which you can create a Trash Muppet in one of the shulker farm modules is if a shulker fires two bullets before it splits, meaning the next shulker that appears in the module gets hit by the previous shulker's bullet at the same time that the previous shulker goes through the portals. And shulkers are actually capable of aggroing towards each other if they accidentally hit each other with their shulker bullets. Meaning, when the next shulker aggroes towards the shulker going through the portal, it then disappears, leaving this shulker confused over what mob to target. In this state of confusion, if the snow golem shoots at the shulker, it fails to execute its shell opening method, meaning the shulker gets stuck with its shell closed, but it still fires shulker bullets. This explains why the shulker replacement rate can increase with much higher golem counts. Because with very high golem counts, you get a very low transition time, and a much higher probability of a golem aggroing the shulker within the state of confusion. Another way which I've seen trash muppets occurring is from shulkers being distributed throughout the farm in minecarts like this, aggroing on snow golems inside the modules as they pass by. And this is continuously activating and deactivating the shulkers aggro on different targets. And there we go, we've got another trash muppet right here in this module. And this is a serious problem for this particular farm because what it means is that modules requesting shulkers can get stuck in this state of continuously requesting shulkers. And this can seriously affect the rates of the farm. In order to try and mitigate this problem, we have this clock right here which will continuously send shulkers while the modules are requesting them. The result is that the farm will eventually stabilize and actually run at its full capacity. But then, all it takes is for a single trash muppet to lose a shulker in a single module, and then it can get stuck having trash muppet after trash muppet and go through the farm. The thing is, when I built this farm, I was originally aiming for 72,000 shulker shells per hour. I could have aimed for a much higher value than 72,000 per hour. However, I wanted the farm to be very lag efficient like it is right now, but I also wanted to be able to fit it inside of this theme for the decoration. Because of course, the only way to make this farm faster would simply be to add more modules. And more modules means that it'll be too fat to fit in the Manco Tower. So then, because of Trash Muppets, instead of being the idealized 72,000 shells per hour, the rates have dropped slightly to 69,000 per hour. Which I guess is still pretty nice. Alright, that should be enough theory for now. Let's actually go ahead and build up one of the shulker farm modules from scratch to get a feel for how the farm works. We will begin with the central position in which our shulker will sit on, which I have chosen to be in the centermost position of a chunk. This will be important for later on when we need to consider chunk loading. Once we know where our shulker is going to sit, we want to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 blocks out in every direction. This block right here is the very last block that our shulker can teleport to. Which means, when considering our portal arrangement, we can put an additional block here. Our shulker can sit on that surface pointing into a portal, then we have another position a shulker can sit, and then another portal, and our final position. So we will have one, two, three, four portals per module. Now here we get to our first important design choices. Over repeated trials, I found that the best way to have the snow golem fitted is to ensure there is as much space as possible 
for the snowballs to reliably hit the shulker. And I can't even keep track of how many times I've had to make slight alterations to the design. Because after I recorded most of the building of the module, I even changed these slabs right here to be soul sand with fire right here in order to kill any stray shulker bullets that happen to get through. So something that needs to be noted is that the snow golem's accuracy can be kind of bad, causing the snowballs to hit the walls of the chamber. So the closer that the snow golem is to the shulker, the better the module will be. However, we also need to reliably detect the snowballs with a string and an observer. Which means our string needs to be at least two blocks away from our snow golem. This detection of the snowball is what allows us to detect whether there is a shulker in the chamber. Another interesting note is that when the shulker fires his bullets, if there is a slab above its head like so, the bullets for some reason seem to more reliably pathfind into the shulker. Now these are really ambiguous design decisions that have only been discovered over repeated trials of building module after module after module. And after building lots of different shulker farms, for some reason, having this slab here improves the rates. Over repeated testing, we've also found that a two block space for the shulker bullet to rebound is optimal. So now we need to consider how these modules are going to fit together. This redstone wire is going to provide the signal to turn the module on and off. And we make the signal run through the module, allowing us to easily tile additional modules behind and have them run off the same signal. As for replacing shulkers, I found that the method of just passing a rail through the module is simply not going to work when we tile the modules continuously. This is because imagine if a module down the line is requesting a shulker. But what can happen, as you just saw, the minecart briefly picked up our shulker. Let's also just ignore the fact that it literally just picked up the snow golem as well. In order to solve this problem of modules interfering with each other by requesting shulkers, I simply remove the rail completely and simply drop the minecart in from above and destroy it directly next to the space where our shulker sits. The minecart will then go into a dropper, which will transport the minecart back to the system which dispenses them. And our modules end up with this water stream which runs through the middle of them. And once again I'm having to backtrack and modify some of my earlier design decisions. This system for detecting the minecart and dispensing into the water stream only works reliably if it's one item. However, if multiple items end up in the dropper, it can then get stuck. So instead we have to use a clock which will clock the dropper continuously while there are items inside. There we go, it no longer gets stuck. And this is an important point about Murphy's Law. Because if you think something might go wrong with the way that you've wired a system, something probably will eventually go wrong with it. So it's always worth assessing how much work is needed to fix the problem if it happens and weighing that against the simplicity of the system versus fixing the problem. In this instance, the cost of ignoring the issue meant that you would every now and then need to go through and check which droppers had items jammed in it, which would be kind of difficult to do when there's 126 modules to check. And the cost was only adding 3 observers and a note block, so it wasn't really all that hard. Now because we rely on dropping the shulkers in from the top of the modules, we can actually devise a really simple mechanism to decide which modules need shulkers. And something else that you might notice is that I'm trying to maximize the amount of valid teleportation spaces to get our shulkers through the portals. We also need to be extremely diligent and make sure that we eliminate all of these internal cavities where shulkers could get stuck. And the great thing about this shulker farm module is that we have plenty of space inside of here to carve out a cavity for redstone components. And once again, making absolutely sure to seal up these spaces where shulkers could teleport to. Alright, what we've got here at the top is a simple hopper based cooldown clock. Now this will even out the pulses from snowball detection events indicating that our shulker is in the module and thus closing off this rail and ensuring that our shulker will keep on moving to the next module. At the top, we have this wire 
which will take a signal from the module indicating when any module in a line is requesting a shulker. Just make sure you go ahead and set this hopper clock to something like a stack of items. All of this circuitry is meant to make our shulker replacement mechanism very straightforward. As you can imagine, when you have lots of these modules stacked together in a compact space, locating which module is requesting a shulker could be very difficult. So what we do is we take a piecewise approach. If an individual module loses a shulker anywhere within the cluster, our cooldown clock will activate, retracting this rail, meaning any shulker that comes along this rail will fall into this module and replace the shulker here. This system will also activate this global circuit for the entire slice of modules which will extend this rail meaning that any shulker sent to the entire system will land here and be directed along this rail. So what we will have is a central rail line from which if any module in a slice is requesting a shulker we retract this rail here allowing the shulker to drop down to the level that is requesting the shulker which will then find its way to the specific module that is requesting the shulker. So what this means out of hundreds of modules stacked closely together we can efficiently locate the module that is requesting the shulker and replace the shulker in that module. A few optimization features we want to go ahead and add a chain separating the layers these will confuse the pathfinding of the shulker bullets, giving them much shorter lifetimes in the farm and thus decreasing the amount of lag. And when you've actually completely stacked up the modules, at the very top of your shulker farm, it'll be a good idea to put some lava flows like so, in order to destroy excess shulker bullets trying to get out of the farm. And with that, we have the ultimate compact shulker farm module, perfect for tiling in all three dimensions. Now in order to stack up the modules together I'm going to go ahead and make a selection box around it with Lightmatica. However I should note something quite tricky about the shulker farm module. You'll notice that we actually have circuitry from modules protruding into other modules. So this right here is going to be my central module as it has been chunk aligned to the center of a chunk. Bringing in a schematic of another module, I want to bring these pillars of the nether portal together, like so. And you will notice that part of the circuitry from this module clips into this module. So I'm just going to double check to make sure that paste replace behavior in Lightmatica's options is set to all. This means when I paste this module in, there we go, it replaced the blocks that were clipping. Ah, but now look at what happens if I paste coming in from this direction. If I align the schematic, like so, you can see this wall of glass blocks is going to replace this part of the circuitry of this module. Meaning, as I bring the schematic in, I want to go back into my configuration options and set this to none. There we go. We made sure that we didn't replace the components. And then just repeating this process of carefully pasting in the schematics and tying all the modules together. Here we have a complete layer of 3x3 three three modules, but of course, you could make it 2x2, two 4x4, two, 5x5, four four, five five, or any size that you want. The beauty is that this shulker farm module is infinitely tileable in every direction. So I can go ahead and tile this left, right, forward, back, up, down, any which way which sits my fancy. And every single module already comes equipped with all the circuitry needed to control every single module on a slice from a centralized position. 
now that we have a full layer, let's go ahead and expand our selection. And now we can copy the entire layer. Now, when I place this layer on top of this bottom layer, I need to keep in mind that all of this dead space underneath clips with the circuitry at the top. And so I want to go ahead into my configuration menu and disable the paste replace. Now I can paste in the next layer. There we go. A whole new layer added to the shulker farm. Adding one additional layer and we end up with a nice and compact 27 shulker farm cluster. With a single snow golem in each module, we end up producing about 400 shulker shells per module. Meaning, this 27 shulker farm cluster will be producing about 10,000 shells per hour. Let's go ahead and finish off this 27 shulker farm cluster into a fully functioning shulker farm. Alright, our first step was to connect up all the modules. We have our on and off switch right here. To turn every single module on and off. We also have our central rail line. Right now all the modules are disabled and don't have any shulkers. So naturally they will be requesting shulkers. And something that we want to make absolutely sure of is we place down some repeaters here on maximum delay to prevent these pistons from being short pulsed. These torch towers will allow us to communicate the signal from each layer all the way to the top indicating that this slice is requesting a shulker in at least one of the modules. At the very top we have the system which allows each slice of modules to request a shulker as well as this main conduit which indicates if any module in the entire farm is requesting a shulker meaning if this wire is powered then we should dispatch a shulker to the shulker farm. But where will these spare shulkers come from you might ask? We could try to collect shulkers from the nether side and bring them back to the overworld in order to refill the shulker farm modules. But in my experience, this process is rather cumbersome, especially when dealing with the scalability issues of the shulker farm. Instead, we'll be using this super neat and compact single dimension shulker farm that I designed using a mechanic discovered by ending credits. Be sure to check out his video on the topic to learn exactly how the mechanic works. But basically, this single dimension shulker farm will act as a small breeder producing fuel for our big boy shulker farm. Alright, the overworld side of the wiring is pretty much done. What we need to do now is link up this farm to another side where we can kill the shulkers and obtain their shells. Now in order to help us out, I'm going to go ahead and use a carpet tool known as overlay. So if I do slash script load overlay and then slash overlay portal coordinates we now subdivide our overworld into these corresponding block coordinates in the nether. So what I want to do is get these coordinates here for this corner of the farm is 30 around minus 44 there we go I want to go to the other corner and record these coordinates. So that is 23 minus 51. Another important detail to note is the wire level of your farm. Because how we're going to do the linking is we're going to make sure that these portals link to a portal in the nether that is up in the sky relative to these overworld positions. Alright, using those coordinates I obtained before, I've marked out this square which represents the extremities of our farm in the nether. On top of this platform, I've just built a cube of portals like so. And I've just offset it to be one block smaller to give it a one block center to make everything symmetrical around our TNT looting system. A little while later, and we have our looting system. With this setup, I've given you a range of options for looting the shulkers. The first one is that with this lever powered, we will activate a simple TNT duper, which will launch the TNT into the chamber and loot the shulkers normally. The advantage of the duper is of course that it can run completely independently of the player, but it also prevents the dropping of XP, which brings us to our second option. If I switch this lever off, 
my alt will start placing down TNT. And this will go into the TNT looting system. And what this will do is increase the rate slightly by applying the looting effects to our kills on the shulkers. The simplest way to set up the TNT looting system is to use the arrow yourself. So just shoot it onto this terracotta. I don't actually want this arrow to go into the chamber because it currently has the arrow belonging to my alt in there. But once the arrow is on that terracotta, it would hit that note block and it would automatically align the arrow to the chamber. You can then go ahead and hold a looting sword in your offhand as you place down TNT. The only drawback of this method is that we see a lot of experience orbs building up in the chamber like this. And this can increase the lag caused by the farm slightly. If you want to increase the lag performance of your farm a bit, the third option is the TNT looting using skeletons. So in order to figure out which skeletons will pick up the looting sword, all you need to do is throw a carved pumpkin at a whole bunch of skeletons and one of them will pick it up. If you then leave the area and force a lot of them to despawn, The only one they'll be left behind is the one wearing the carved pumpkin. In order to collect the arrow from the skeleton, all you need to do is play a little game of hide and seek. So if you time it correctly, you'll be able to place down the piston. Let's try that again. There we go. Now... We pulse this qu piston quickly, arrow will fall straight down to the terracotta, hit this note block, and now the skeleton's arrow has been aligned to the chamber. Now if you grab yourself a looting sword and just throw it to the skeleton, the skeleton will automatically pick up the sword, and now you can properly loot shulkers without them dropping any XP. So by default without the looting effect, which is what we get if we use the TNT duping system, we obtain roughly 10,300 shells per hour. However, if we use the TNT looting system, we'll need to consume physical blocks of TNT that will need to be crafted out of sand and gunpowder. And we increase the rates to about 14,100 shells per hour and consume about 667 TNT per hour. Of course, you'll also need the player to place down the TNT. Because both of these rates are above the speed that a single hopper can transfer items. Our little storage system here will load this shulker box at double hopper speed from these hopper lines coming straight from the killing chamber. And in these chests, we'll get our full boxes of shulker shells. So our nether side is done. Our overworld side is also done. All that's left now is to introduce our portal based chunk loading system to eliminate the need for the player to ever be on the overworld side. So in order to make sure that every aspect of the farm is chunk loaded, we will want to load this chunk right here. We'll also want to load this chunk, this chunk, and this chunk. By placing portal based chunk loaders in those four chunks, we'll be able to load all of these modules. We will also want to place one more chunk loader in this chunk right here to keep our breeder loaded. All right, with our portal corner overlay enabled, I'm going to obtain coordinates inside of these chunks and then go over to the nether side and build up the receivers for the chunk loading system. Back on the nether side, I want to make sure that I set up the chunk loading grid at a Y level that is above the portals in our killing chamber because this will allow us to easily link up the chunk loading grid to the overworld. Here are our five portals and just double checking. I started the portal frames at Y level 200 and here are our five portals for the chunk loading in the overworld above the farm. Of course making sure that they are exactly the same Y level as the nether side. Let's double check to make sure they link properly. Yep, that looks all right. Perfect. Check this one. Oh, that's not linking properly. All right, I just packed them in a bit tighter. Let's see if they link properly this time. 
Yep, that's the correct portal. If we go back to the nether. Perfect. Let's try this one. Yep, that's correct. And back to the nether. Yep, perfect. And now last one. Links up. Perfectly. There we go. Our portals are now properly linked up. Now we can go ahead and add on the minecart mechanisms. Alright, now we need to figure out what side of the portals our minecarts will come out of. I'm just going to tick freeze. Those are our portal chunk loading receivers. So now I can just remove all these minecarts. And now, when I dispense the minecarts, they should all come back again. Perfect. You might notice this portal right here has an extra minecart system. Now this would be to turn the farm on and off in the overworld from the nether side. And with a receiver and a little bit of wallstone all the way down to the farm, we can turn it on and off all from the nether side. And now for the moment that you've all been waiting for. I have fully wired up this system with additional fail safes for things such as if the TNT stops moving for any reason or automatically switch the farm off. We'll also not let you turn on the farm unless the chunk loading is active. So what I can do, I can start up the chunk loading. I can turn on TNT duper like this. We should see TNT flying into our killing chamber like so. I flip this lever. We'll now have shulkers coming through from the overworld. There we go, the farm is now running. With this chunk loading system and the TNT duper running, I can now safely leave the area and go and do something else while the farm gets our shulker shells. When I come back, everything's running perfectly fine. Instead, if I wanted to bump up the rates of the farm slightly, but also flex about my infrastructure that allows me to craft TNT, I can fill up this chest with TNT or install a shulker box unloader. So if I flip this lever off, then here, I can now place down the TNT, like so. And now the farm is running off the TNT looter. And of course, if you want to stop using the farm, all you need to do is stop placing TNT. And the foul safe should trigger automatically, like so. Push the farm off, and it'll stop sending shulkers to the nether. Now we can go over to here, put this lever off, activate the TNT duper, and that can clear out any of the excess shulkers that made it through. And now, we can properly switch the farm off. So there we have it! Wavetech's ultimate shulker farm, along with the ultimate compact portal based shulker farm module. This project has been many months in the making, and we went absolutely all out with the build. Of course I'd like to give a special thanks to all the Wavetech members who helped out with the project over the past week. And just to demonstrate how much building went into this one project, this pickaxe started on full durability. This project has also introduced another problem that we need to solve. After completing a massive project like the world's most powerful shulker farm, you're going to be left with one hell of a chest monster. And Wavetech's main storage is not currently equipped to handle these kinds of sorting loads. So you can probably guess what our next major project is going to be. Well until then, I'll be working hard to give you the best technical content, and be sure to subscribe to be notified of when I publish my videos. So goodbye for now, and I will see you next time.